of her hoarse voice, um, you know, the type of operation she needed wasn't explained to her. What she recalls is that, in her words, she had calcium, and she doesn't understand why they had to go into her throat, and she couldn't understand why um, she couldn't speak now. So within, she was one of the patients that had fall out for longer than the six-week period that you normally have a hoarse voice for anything that has to go past your voice box. And um, she ended up after six months, it can last up to a year. Um, that some patients, according to the research that we read, are preparing for the case. So after about six months, she went to an ENT who injected her with collagen and as a result, completely negated any possibility that she could heal uh, completely. It is oh, one of our hospitals that I sort of permanently represent because in PE time, they are always in the book for something or another. Um, and I um, actually, they phone my, me immediately when I have an angry patient because I have taught them to do that so that I can immediately help them to assess if we need to jump in and get a mediator to calm things down or um, and if it's going to escalate. Because your angry patient, people don't like, it's like insurance. People don't like paying insurance. They don't like going to a doctor. They don't like going to a lawyer. You know, we are grudge purchases. So that means if they go there and they feel like they're not being treated like they are God's gift to this world, they are gonna become upset. You know, we get different, if you can buy the book, How to Deal with High Conflict Personalities. It's an American mediator that wrote that, that deals with, um, with marriages. Now you can imagine two very angry people in a marriage. So if you can, when you read that book, it sort of makes you realize that you cannot tell, certain people you can't tell them to calm down. That is their personality. You know, they, you need to find a different way to put water on that fire just as senior counsel should not be arrogant. I am not better than anybody else because I'm an advocate. Nobody in this room is better than anybody else because we are doctors and professionals. We have achieved amazing stuff, but it doesn't mean that we now have to be arrogant about what we have achieved. We need to be gentle because people are ill and we need to make people feel confident about what we can do, but we don't need to make them think that if I don't listen to them, you're going to clap them one way because you're so arrogant. So first of all, those people probably won't return to you or they will complain about the services you delivered um, or they will tell everybody else you are an ass, you know, so it's much better to be nice, trust me. It, and it also calms you down, especially in a super stressful environment, in a trauma situation, et cetera, et cetera. So to understand civil suits, you need to understand, to understand that kind of money, you need to understand how they calculate it. Mm -hmm. So a civil suit, which is basically if they sue you for negligence, is divided into three sections. So there's liability. In other words, are you liable for what happened? Then there is causation. Is what happened the cause of the harm? And then there is damages. And that means the amount of money they can get as a result of the causation. So, um, so if you were liable, but you fixed it, there's no cause for harm and there's no money. If you are liable, you didn't fix it, there's harm and there's money. Money is future medical expenses. We all know how expensive um, hospitals and medical costs are going forward. Um, a child uh, with CP is now estimated with a particular type of CP, um, which is, you know, um, I'm not going to go into that. It will take too long. But there's a specific type of CP where a child can now live till the age of 45. Um, so that child's medical expenses, all that treatment, Botox, whatever he needs for his spasms going forward, is calculated up until the age of 45, from, from the day he was born. So in a recent case, uh, we, I'm appearing for the trust, that was 21 million rand, just for the medical expenses. So in eight, that 89 million rand was two babies with CP. So that's what the clan doubled. And they live in Scotland. They were here on holiday, uh, or they were living here and working here, but they permanently resident in Scotland. So you are now paying UK fees. So, um, yeah, and the big question, 
The big question in that case was if we can deduct the amount of money that NHI will be contributing in the UK, if we could deduct that from what we were paying them. Um, and because the NHI can actually come and claim in South Africa from you if you um, have a negligence case of one of the patients here so they can recover it from you. So if you don't have insurance, buy one house that you can just buy to sell if you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> they, you need a backup house there. <laughs> the meta-analysis that I've seen and read, um, in the beginning, there was a very small percentage of fallout in comparison to um, the disaster if you didn't take um, the vaccine. Obviously, more information has come forward now. It has a shorter lifespan. We know that there are people now that, um, you know, if you're immunocompromised or you have heart disease or anything like that, that it becomes more complicated if you take the vaccine. But I think I can still confidently say at this stage, that I would be able to defend every any doctor that prescribed it for the reason that at the time, any um, research there was, and a lot of people think there wasn't research, there actually was quite a lot of research on the subject um, that I would still be able to defend any doctor that prescribed it. So, um, I think the people they will most likely have to go after if they do wanna go after somebody would be uh, the pharmaceutical companies.